Hey, before today's episode, I want you to do me a favor by hitting that subscribe or follow button in front of you, um, depending on what platform you're currently list- using to listen to my podcast. I upload weekly, currently aiming to maybe put out two episodes per week, but until then, it is an... It is new episode every Sunday, 1 p.m. here in Vancouver or 8 p.m. GMT, if you even know what that means. So uh, make sure you're also following Gentleman Pursuits on every social media as well. If you don't, you're missing out on some really, really good content I put out every day. Once again, it's Gentleman Pursuits. Hey, what is good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome. Welcome back to another episode of the Gentleman Pursuits podcast, a really late happy new year to you guys and i hope everyone's doing fine had fun over the weekend and holidays you know it's been so long since the last episode and i'm so sorry in the end i'm still a college student and i have all these exams and assignment bs going on in my life and after that um for christmas i went back to hong kong to spend the holiday with my family and my friends you know and uh but long story short i'm back now and without further ado let's get straight into today's episode today i want to get back to the basics the very fundamentals of horology and i'm planning to do this once in a while and separate them into different segments so you guys can learn them bits by bits i am talking about the terminology used in the world of watches Believe me or not, even though you think you know a lot of these words, there's still a bunch of really niche jargons that you've never heard of, or perhaps maybe you've confused them with different words. No surprise, so that's why I'm here. That's why you're listening to this episode. Right, so it would be, it would be good to familiarize yourself with these terms, because who knows, maybe one day you'll encounter these words and then it'll be your time to shine. I'll be going over eight terms each time, each episode. Um, so because it's a really weird number, but I think if I, you know, cover too many terms each time, it will be not that is not as effective for you guys to learn. So we're going to start simple, and the first term will be lux. Now lux are the little ridges extended from the case itself, and it's used to hold the straps and bracelets is really not a hard term to learn and the second term is crown crown is the knob you use to turn and change time and date with i suppose everyone should know these two but in case you didn't know what they are or what they're called um here you go so these are like the basics so okay the third term i want to go over is chronograph um, the reason why I chose this term is because we hear the word chronograph a lot nowadays, right? But how many of us really know? How many of you guys really know what a chronograph what a chronograph is? Right? Because around a year ago, when I first got into watches, all my friends would come to me when with their watch related questions, and one of them was like, "What exactly is a chronograph?" Right? I wasn't able to answer that because even though i heard it all these time right i heard it a lot i still have no idea what it actually means so here it goes so a chronograph is actually a type of watch that features an additional stopwatch function in addition to the main time um function right so basically it's like a stopwatch function of the watch a really common feature seen in hundreds of watches like the Daytona by Rolex and the Speedmaster by Omega and most raising watches, just to name a few. Next up, the fourth term is uh, we have the word calendar. Now, it's not really a term on its own, but more like an umbrella term instead. And I want to go over what's within the umbrella term calendar because a lot of people have trouble distinguishing between a normal calendar, annual calendar, and a perpetual calendar. I actually covered this matter on uh, the latest article on my website about uh, it's named three common misconceptions people have on watches. Um, if you want to read that, feel free to pause this episode and you know go read that first if you're interested. But basically, a normal calendar 
you'll have to advance it every month that only has um, 30 days or less so you'd have to adva manually advance it in february april june september and november for an annual calendar which is like its name um, you would only have to advance it in february so everything else is built within um, the movement so you don't have to advance it but for a perpetual calendar it does not require you to advance it at all as everything like it's counted already for you for the next um, hundred years so it's built into the movement as well but it's more um, intricate right but one thing to be careful about a perpetual calendar is that if you messed up while fixing the date of the perpetual calendar, you would have to wait until the battery runs out before you can fix it because uh, you don't want to screw up the whole um, sequence, of the movement. So you have to wait for the battery dies before you can fix it. So a little note to yourself if you own a perpetual calendar. Next word for you is the term flyback. Flyback um, is stopwatch function, or, or should I say it's a word to describe a, stop, a stopwatch function. So it means um, a stopwatch that doesn't require you to stop, you know, to stop it, to reset it. You can reset it anywhere you want. So a brief history behind this function. Um, is that it was intended for World War pilots to precisely time their return flights or bombing of a certain place. One push of a button allowed them to time many different things without the delay of stopping it before resetting it. So it's really convenient for them without messing up the timing, right? So it's really important for a pilot. Oils and stuff, right? Fuel. Okay, so this following word is quite interesting as well, as a lot of people don't really know what it means. This word is chronometer. So if you think if you think you know what this word means, um, fact check yourself, right? You don't want to look like a fool before. You don't want to look like a fool, just in general, right? Now, you may think that chronograph and chronometer are the same thing, or one is the derivative or another. Both right and wrong, a chronometer can be a chronograph and vice versa. However, a chronometer actually isn't a complication like a chronograph. Chronometer is a term used to describe a high precision watch with a running seconds display whose movement accuracy has been controlled over a period of several days in different positions and at different temperatures by an official neutral body. This certificate, the chronometer certificate, is issued by COSC in Switzerland. So just to name a few watches with the chronometer certificates or obviously the Daytona, it's called the superlative um, chronometer, which is like one level above a normal chronometer. And the Omega Glowmaster chronometer is just, you know, a chronometer. Next up, next up, the seventh term um, in this episode will be the minute repeater. I myself were confused as well when I first came across this word. Like, the hell is a minute repeater? Does it repeat the minutes? Like, it doesn't make sense to me, right? So, a minute repeater watch is a watch that chimes back the time back at you. It literally, it's a it's a bell. Like there's a bell within the watch repeating the time back to you when you push a button like a grandfather clock, but only does it on demand. Really interesting. But the most interesting thing about this minute, minute repeater is the origin of it. So it was developed in the 17th and 18th century when street lights and lamps were not that popular and fluorescent watches definitely weren't a thing back then. People can hardly tell the time in the dark with their watches, right? With their pocket watches. So the solution to that is the minute repeater. So people can tell the time by making the watch chime the time back at them. A really logical but complicated solution. One of the most, um, one of the more famous um, minute repeater watches is the ALS, Alanga and Sana striking time. Super stunning watch. Um, really interesting with an, with a really interesting complication, just in general, an amazing watch. 
So the last term, the eighth term, is tourbillon. Definitely top five greatest invention in the watchmaking history. A tourbillon is both awesome looking and highly beneficial for your watch. However, some of you、um, may argue that a tourbillon isn't that beneficial as it brings different problems to the watch.、Um, that is a completely different topic that requires its standalone episode to discuss on. So let's focus on the tourbillon's initial intention, shall we? So basically, a tourbillon intends to accord intends to, according to George Daniel in his book Watchmaking, the purpose of the invention was to eliminate errors of poise in the balance by revolving the escapement continuously to produce a uniform average rate. He also pointed out that the tourbillon watch is expected to keep better time than a conventional watch. If its potential to maintain a closer rate for a longer period of time is to be fully exploited, it should be fitted with an escapement that does not meet oil at the impulse surfaces. So there you have it, the function of a tourbillon.、Um, if you guys really want to know more about the controversy of tourbillons, let me know. Maybe I'll actually actually do a, a standalone podcast episode on it, or maybe write about it in an article. Like, do you prefer reading about it or listening? You know, listen to it. So let me know in on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Email me. I don't care if you want want me to do it. So there you have it. The eight terms that.、Um, Kind of serves as the fundamental for watches. Like you kind of really need to know these terms before、um, further understanding more about watchmaking. And yeah, I hope to do a second episode sooner because I find it really interesting to teach you guys about the basics, like the terminology stuff. I learned a lot as well. Um. Yeah. So, do you do you guys like it? Do you guys want it to be longer or shorter or like five words each time, ten, fifteen? Let me know as well. And until next time, have a great weekend. I'll see you guys. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to the latest episode of the podcast.、Um, make sure you hit that subscribe or follow button in front of you. I'm not sure if you're listening this on Spotify or Anchor, but either way, make sure you're following me on、uh, every social media platform on Twitter,、uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Anchor, Spotify, everything. Just make sure you're following me. You'll get the latest news on articles, uploads, podcasts, new podcasts, new news, all kind of posts on watches and whiskeys. If you're not, you're missing out. So yeah, make sure you're following us. And until next Sunday, have a great week, guys. Stay safe. I'll see you guys.